The products of terror, a simple bucket believed to contain simple household ingredients combined to make a potentially simple yet lethal bomb. Products like these not only available in the shops but online through Amazon. And as this programme has discovered, Amazon will not only sell them to you but recommend the combination of elements required. So here we have a chemical widely used in food preparation, but also one of the main ingredients of gunpowder. And just below, in the frequently bought together section, two other vital components. With these and another ingredient, which you can find if you scroll down on the same page, put them together and you have all the makings of a crude bomb. If you wanted to make thermite, part of a firebomb which burns at 2,500 degrees, Amazon technology will cleverly guide you further, suggesting powders. Not only that, but further down it will also flag ball bearings, often used for shrapnel to cause maximum damage. I'm particularly concerned that Amazon's allowing this to happen. When we hear about bomb components um, being available from you know, your kitchen cupboard or from the, uh, the parts in your garden shed, we tend to sort of think, well, they can't be very powerful, they can't be very dangerous, they're very sort of crude Heath Robinson. But the fact is, you know, if you know what you're doing, it's very, very easy to make a very, very powerful improvised explosive device. Amazon's come under fire before for selling bomb-making manuals, which were reportedly still available even after the Manchester terror attack. And while they may have been removed, the technology that recommends groups of dangerous, potentially deadly chemicals is still very much in operation. Elsewhere, tech companies in terror often seem to go hand in hand. Facebook and YouTube have been criticised for hosting extremist, often illegal content. And there was a big row when WhatsApp refused to hand over the encrypted message sent by the Westminster terrorist Khalid Massoud moments before he launched his deadly attack. No one's suggesting products like bleach and ball bearings aren't freely available on the high street. In fact, many of the ingredients required to make a homemade bomb. But should one of the world's biggest internet companies allow its computer algorithms to prompt users to buy combinations of products that are potentially life-threatening in the wrong hands? 99.9% .9 of these algorithms work legitimately and actually to the benefits of the consumer. Um, more needs to be done because there is still a rogue element um, that enables recommendations for not just the easy procurement of weapons and explosives, but also, you know, if an individual actually accidentally misses a component part during the sort of bomb building or the acquisition stage, um, these algorithms currently actually recommend which additional components um, should be included just in case they've forgotten them. The government has issued reams of guidance on buying and selling explosive substances, including this leaflet with lists of restricted chemicals and tips for how to spot suspicious people. But crucially, there's no separate rules for online stores like Amazon. In a statement, Amazon said... All products sold on Amazon must adhere to our selling guidelines, which also adhere to all UK laws. We will work closely with the police and law enforcement agencies should circumstances arise where we can assist investigations. The question still remains. When Amazon says frequently bought together for certain combinations of products, how many customers have in fact done just that and for what purpose? Well, I think this is shocking. Amazon is one of the biggest companies in the world, one of the richest companies in the world, and they have very sophisticated algorithms that they should be able to use to prevent this kind of thing happening. The idea that a company like this could be making it easier for people to put together uh, dangerous explosives, I think, is, is very disturbing. Then they have a, 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 a sort of final offering, which is uh, other people who have bought what you've bought and in this case, they suggest ball bearings. And that's perhaps the most disturbing thing of all uh, when you look at this. And that's why Amazon really needs to recognise that they have some social responsibility in this. They make huge profits from selling things to people all around the world and from linking one product to another. But they make sufficient product that, for sufficient profit that they really should be able to, to use that in order to invest in proper safeguarding and in order to be able to make sure that this kind of thing does not happen. 
open. As chair of the Home Affairs Committee, will you be raising this? Will you be making recommendations? Well, we have already made recommendations to the government about social media companies who don't act swiftly enough to take down online extremism and illegal material, and they should be being penalised. They should face fines, strong fines and penalties if they don't act swiftly enough basically to meet their legal as well as their moral responsibilities and obligations. And I think we are obviously now going to have to look more widely at companies like Amazon and others as well. We know that online radicalization, online extremism is a serious issue and a growing issue, and we do need more action against it. Yvette Cooper, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, we've seen an unprecedented number of attacks over this last year. And quite clearly, you know, we are being targeted on a regular basis. Whilst the response to the emergency services has been first class, quite the, the real challenge now is how can we stop this happening? Um, we've seen people from a variety of different backgrounds, some self-radicalised, some with a previous history known to the security services. But whilst our response has been very good, we've got to start getting further down the line and stop this happening in the first instance. Uh, given the time that's elapsed since 7-7 uh, and today, I mean, what do you think has changed? Well, I think we've seen a, a, a new a, a arrival of people. We've seen people coming in who have not got any great history. They may not have been to uh, abroad and been radicalised. We've seen self-radicalised people here. Many of them have not been through any particular training here. They, uh, via the internet, via the local influences, have very quickly obtained the ingredients to, uh, to make a device and have decided to attack. So that makes the task for the intelligence services and the police very, very difficult indeed. But we know there are several hundreds of targets at the moment that they're interested in. And quite clearly, what we need to see is a big upgrade in their resources to take on this enormous challenge. Of course, what has happened since... Uh... 7-7 is the birth of IS and the struggle to defeat them. And, of course, the active engagement of Western forces, British forces included, in, in doing that. Is that a trigger? Well, of course. I mean, that has inspired lots of people to go abroad. But the, the big danger at the moment, of course, with IS being in trouble, is, there, is fighters returning here and to other parts of Europe and finding their way here from Europe. So that's another big challenge that our security for, uh, forces have got to take them on because these will be hardened fighters, very radicalised, very tough, lots of experience and they provide a real threat I think to us and to the rest of Europe. I'd like to change the um, subject slightly uh, in, in that we've carried out this investigation earlier in the programme in, into the way in which it's possible to look for chemicals online on Amazon and uh, find yourself connected to further chemicals that would enable you to make a bomb. And, and most specifically, this extraordinary thing at the, mo at the end, when you reach a, a point at which they say, well, others who've bought these ingredients have also bought ball bearings. Now, clearly, that's not necessarily illegal. Um, what do you make of it? I thought it was shocking. I thought it was absolutely extraordinary to think that an algorithm could say such a thing and other people thought bought similar items and then to suggest ball bearings are absolutely disgraceful. And we've got to see an immediate reaction from Amazon and any other supplier for that matter to deal with this. They employ some of the brightest people in the world to, to sell us things. Well, let's see them employ those brains rapidly to stop this and stop it right now.